There could be a lot of people joining the I Told You So Club this year. We'll find out, but man, if it does break, that's gonna be a pain to fix next year. Good morning, guys. Welcome back to our off-grid homestead here in North Idaho. Look at what we've got here, huh? 48-inch pallet forks for the tractor. Because we've got something coming up today that we're going to actually need those things for. But first, Tux gets a special treat today, huh? This is not a sponsored video, and we don't have a subscription to BarkBox. But our friend Heather from over at Cuz We Can Farms, she gave this to Tux. And so let's open it up. Tux. Are you ready for your surprise? Are you ready? What is it? What is it? Wow. Oh, he sees something squishy. <laughs> what is it? Oh, wow. This is like a really high quality toy. It seems kind of sad to give it to Tux just to chew up. <laughs> okay, sure. You can have it. Tux is definitely interested in the toy. Do you want it? <laughs> okay, we'll let him have it. I think he likes it. Thanks, Heather. We've got a few different tasks that we want to try to get accomplished today. The first one is getting the underlayment on the roof up here because, oh, look at that. It's going to rain today. We'd like to get that done before it rains too much because we were a little bit late, guys. It rained last night. It's supposed to rain more today. We're actually under a flash flood watch right now. And so we want to try to get the underlayment on before it flash floods. I got this feeling of fire. Watch me reach up, pull the sun from the sky I'm all done waiting for life to arrive I'm gonna make, make today mine So guys, we wanna fill in this trench that has the propane line in it. Before we do that, we have to smooth out the bottom so that the pipe is nice and level. All right, so we got the underlayment on. Check it out, tiger paws, all the way down that way, and all the way down that way. Oh, and look at that, man. Looks like we're gonna be getting some rain. We still got some other outdoor projects that we're trying to finish up today before that rain gets here. Hopefully we'll be able to get them done. Let me get off the roof, and then we'll start on the next project. Man, look at that, Seth. It's raining right now. Rain. It's nice. Perfect Fine. timing, man. Yeah. There we go. There we go. All right, lay them up on top of here. <laughs> All right, let's put the bucket on. Seth's a chicken. He wanted me to move. He did a good job. First time. Yeah, first time. That wasn't the first time ever. It was just the first attempt this time. It's hard to get those things to line up perfectly the very first time, but he did it. There's what it looks like from down here. Looking nice. And you guys were talking to me about the rafter tails and how you guys are concerned that there's not enough left here because the bird's mouth was so deep. You could very well be right. We didn't do it according to the rules. So we've got about two inches of rafter tail like left there from the bird's mouth right around there but we do have this two by eight fascia here that is connected to you know it's connected over here it goes all the way across over to there and so hopefully that two by eight will spread out the load when the snow falls from this roof right to here nailed on that osb really good like every six inches going up there so that hopefully it's really going to tie in all of that together and spread the load out i guess we'll find out this winter guys there could be a lot of people joining the i told you so club this year we'll find out but man if it does break that's going to be a pain to fix next year so you guys saw seth working down in here kind of getting in a little bit leveler going all the way over there which looks good jules cleaned out all around the solar shed because guys part of our project today is it's filling in this trench it's moving this giant dirt pile so that we can get in here and move the solar shed we're not going to be moving it too far and i wish we would have just put it where it's going to go today last year but it's going to get moved over here about 10 feet right over into this area here why is it going to be moved over there seth i have no clue you don't know nope <laughs> 
You guys don't tell me these things. Need to know basis. We need to move it because there's gonna be a deck all along here. It's gonna come out from right here 12 feet this way, which when it comes out 12 feet from there, it'll put it right about right here. It's super close to the solar shed. There'll be a post right here. And then we won't be able to move the shed at a later date because, well, you'll see how we're gonna move it. There's probably a different way to do it, but this is the way we're gonna do it. All right, guys, it's time to bury that gas line and backfill this side of the house. It's gonna be good. It's gonna look good out here once we get rid of all this dirt. This dirt over here that came out of the hole for our well is actually really bad dirt. So we're gonna grab it um, and use it for a little bit of our filler dirt. All right, so we got the pile pretty much moved out of the way and we can start preparing the shed to be moved. I don't want to take everything out of it like we did last time. So we're just going to chance it and hope that everything doesn't like fall off of the shelves. But I do want to take my batteries down. They are strapped. They're in there pretty good, but better safe than sorry. I mean, those things are like a thousand dollars each. And then try to move the shed. Let's do it. I met you in the sun. Saw my plans come undone Cause I knew you were the one So tell you man that little bit of rain that we got has been so nice it's cool today it's only like in the upper 60s lower 70s but there's no dust that is super nice so here we got our forklift attachment it attaches just like all the other skid loader type attachments right here this bad boy right here can lift 4200 pounds and it's a 48 inch fork Let's see if we can get this guy attached as easy as seth got the other one attached so we're having a hard time lifting it probably because we didn't empty it first but we're gonna try one more time if we can't lift it then we'll have to empty it so the problem we're having guys is that we're running over a stump and that's causing this edge to go up and hit the bottom of the shed. And then this prong over here, hit the center block, because we're off balance. So my idea is that we bring them in closer together and hopefully slide them in right here and try to go over the stump. This is the really annoying stump. <laughs> is this in all the way? As far as they yeah, go, huh? as far as they can go together. We should have dug those stumps out when we had the excavator, but we didn't even know they were there really. Let's try it. I'm never fully know. How deep your heart can go Or the beauty of your soul Oh, you Where were you all along? Every other one was wrong And I found where I be We're getting it very slowly. We're gonna try from the front. The shed is shaped like this. So right now we're trying to lift it this way and then this way. So we're gonna try instead to lift it this way, then this way, if that makes any sense at all. If you were saying you have to empty it before you move it, let me know down in the comments below because you're right. There's too much weight in there. We're separating right here, the floor from the wall. We got too much weight in there. So we gotta get the generator out, air compressor, solar generator, batteries, toolbox. That'd probably be pretty good. And four lead acid batteries all taken out of this side. We're gonna go ahead and try to lift it again, see if we can't get it up. Give it a try. It's coming up, man. Slowly but surely, we're getting it up. It is a little sketchy, though. What are you so excited about? 
Yeah, look at that, guys. That doesn't look very stable, does it? Got a log, cinder block, and then two by six pieces on each of these corners. It might be almost high enough, guys. Well, we'll drive the tractor around, back the trailer up, take a look at it and see. Maybe we're just gonna have to lift that other side up and then we can back it in or under, maybe. We're gonna back the car up and see how high we need to go still. I don't think we're there yet. <laughs> Had to take a little rain break, but now we're back out here. We're gonna hand roll the trailer underneath it so we don't push it with the car or something. We can be a little bit more careful by hand. Yeah, you're gonna have to go one way or the other. One way or the other. This is the problem right there. We have a ground rod. Let's put this tire down at that end. It makes it a little bit lighter. This tire that's all muddy. How'd it go muddy? Seth was jumping on it. <laughs> He's 14. What do you expect? Was that we're stuck in a hole? Well, we got just a little, little dip. If we're going to push it by hand, we need six hands. Six hands to push it. <laughs> I think the rain's getting to your brain. Maybe. There's no better day. It's time to get away. I wanna see it. What you got there, Seth? So guys, we pulled away the shed finally, and this is what we found. We found 19 <laughs> eggs hidden under the <laughs> shed. Bad chicken. Yep. <laughs> I think we should eat them. No. You don't like rotten eggs? No. Yeah. <laughs> So we quit working last night, guys, because it was just raining too much. Came out today, just start working. And check this out, man. This wheel is supposed to be attached right here. <laughs> you probably knew that. But we broke this part right here, which is also this part right here, which controls the steering. And basically, this is the part that holds the whole wheel assembly on the tractor. Yeah, this is it right here. This is what holds the whole thing on is this piece. About a half inch, a uh, three quarter inch piece of cast steel. We also bent this little axle right here or little, I don't know what you call it, but it goes up inside of here and spins this way. All right, so it controls then the gears inside of there, which turns the wheel. So we're gonna have to go to town, try to find these parts. I'm sure that they're gonna have to be ordered, which means our trailer is out of commission because we have no way to get the shed off of the trailer. Well, that's all right. Let's go to town and see what they say. Went to town, found out about the parts. I'll share that with you in just a second. But we moved the shed kind of over in the area where it's gonna be just so it's, it's out of the way and we can disconnect it from the car. We're gonna have to wait like at least a week, maybe longer for the parts. We had to order them. They're coming from like Georgia or something. But we ordered this part right here, this new part, new seal here, and then a new seal right here. We also had to order the little like drive shaft piece. It's actually inside the house right now, but it runs inside of here from here down through here into right there. That's where it goes. So we got to get the electrical working again. We have no electrical in the house because we took all the batteries out to move this. We got to get all that reconnected, level up this, take the weight off of the trailer tires because it's going to be sitting here for so long. Just get it secured. Finish that up here, hopefully before the end of the day. You've been with me all along, all along, always on my side. You've never gone. You've been with me all so we're taking the pressure off of here. That's kind of one of the main things we're trying to do. But we're also just trying to get it level this direction so that we can work in there. And like, I'm going to do all the electrical and that. probably upgrade our solar system while it's just sitting here on the trailer anyway. We got the trailer level here across the back. This side over here is we jacked up and blocked it. We're going to go ahead and, and just take some of the pressure off of this side, off of the suspension and tire and get that up and put on blocks. Then we can work on the front. We got it lifted up here. We got our blocks down. Let's go ahead and lower it down onto the blocks. Now we can go and work on the front. It's on a good, strong, supportive beam going across there. This tire is still on the ground, but we took a lot of, a lot of the weight off of it, but 
not all the weight. All right, so just thinking through this, we're going to lift the front up with this, or at least we're gonna try to, so we can get it off of the car. It is down pretty low, so it's gonna have to come up quite a bit, I think. And it can't flip back. Like once we disconnect it, we've got the black, the back of its block, so it can't flip back just in case it wanted to do that. But I don't think, I mean, I don't think it does. It's more heavy in the front. You ready? Yeah. All right, so and I can't roll because it's up on blocks. So we'll see here if we can get it off of the car. Because we kind of need the car. You've been with me when I laugh or cry. Anywhere I stood, you stayed. All right, now we're going to put our cinder blocks under it. And our wood blocks. Get it, man. It's level, stable, way stable. Door, pretty level. Doesn't want to really go one way or the other. Thank you, Jules, for your help. <laughs> Seth helped. <laughs> and Seth, thank you. We did it. We got it up here. It's level, it's sturdy, but we need to get the batteries back in there because Jules wants a shower and our trailer is out of commission until we get the tractor fixed. We've got roofing coming in a few days. We've got lumber that we need to build the deck we gotta go get. So hopefully there's somebody that will let us borrow a trailer. Hey Jules, you carried a bunch of these over here? Uh-huh. They're way lighter than lead, the lead acid batteries that moved out. Super, down. super yeah. much yeah. lighter. One-handed. Yeah, I think my back was sore and tired from the lead acid ones yesterday. <laughs> there we go. Now we just gotta wire it back up.